Hey everyone, Tio here. Welcome to another time-lapse sketching tutorial. And today we are going to sketch this scene with a pagoda. And this video is actually the condensed version of the full-length tutorial that I have made for my patrons. So if you guys want to check out the full-length tutorial or support my work and this YouTube channel, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. The tutorial available to my patrons is full length uncut and has step by step instructions from the start to the end. So I'm testing out the composition using quick sketches. I will be using a square format today because I'm only using half a sketchbook. So you know the rule of the thirds that say that you shouldn't place your main subject in the middle of your canvas. Well, with a square format, you can actually sort of get away with that. So right now I'm trying to see whether the pagoda will look best, if it's on the left, right or center. And it looks fine in the center. So with the quick sketch done, I can proceed on to drafting out the composition on the sketchbook, again using pencils. I'm using pencils because this is actually not that uh, straightforward because the pagoda is a tiered building and if you look at the diagonal lines the angles of all those diagonal lines on the different floors are different so for this sketch you may want to draw the angle for the roof first the roof right at the top and the angle for the balcony on the second floor so once you have these two angles locked in you can draw the angles in between these two angles and just make sure that the angles are uh, in between you know average out this is i think one of the easier way to make sure you draw the correct angles without relying on where the vanishing point is because for this sketch um, the vanishing point is outside of the page quite far away so this photo was actually taken during the Gyeongju sketch fest that I attended a few months ago and I wasn't able to sketch this on location unfortunately due to the lack of time which is why I'm drawing this now um, at home uh, drawing this as a tutorial um, I drew the roof first followed by the exterior the left and right of the pagoda and then I divided the pagoda into the different floors. So what I'm doing is drawing the big shapes, then dividing the big shape into smaller shapes, and then drawing the details such as the pillars and the balconies, which I'm doing right now. So once you have drawn the big shapes, it's just much easier to fill in the smaller shapes. I've just added some people in the scene sitting on the benches in front of the building even though there are actually no people in this uh, scene or at least in front of the building. It's good to add people in your scene even though there are no people because they will make your sketch look more lively. And also when you have people in the scene, they give you this uh, sense of scale. Uh, with people, you will know exactly how big the building is behind. So for the pagoda, now I'm just adding the details like the windows and adding the vertical lines for the balcony. This um, sketch is challenging only in the sense that the perspective is challenging. But once you get the perspective down on paper, you can draw all the details very easily later on. So believe it or not, this sketch is actually almost complete. Now I'm just adding the details on the left and right and again if you don't know what details to add in your scene that's probably the stage where you can stop drawing because uh, you don't really want to add so much details to the point that your scene looks too busy so that's the walking path on the right side and there are actually two people uh, walking there under the tree under the shade and they are very difficult to spot which is why I wanted to add people in front of the building because uh, it's easier to see uh, those people there. Another way to make your scene more lively is to add trees. Um, you can add uh, water. Adding clouds in the sky will also make your scene look more lively because these are 
inorganic shapes or uh, inorganic subjects and they contrast really well against uh, buildings which are very structural very uh, solid and they have very straight lines for the tree I'm using Hansa yellow and they look sorry Hansa yellow and French ultramarine to mix the green and for the darker greens like the shadows underneath the trees I'm using Hansa yellow phthalo blue and a warm red so with these three colors you can actually uh, create really dark shadows something that's close to black and sometimes if the black looks right looks correct you can use the black to paint the black areas in the scene as well the cast shadow for the roof and balconies of the pagoda are not that obvious and from what i can see it seems like the shadows actually blend into the white but if you look at the shadows for the trees um, those are very hard shadows with solid edges so in this case i'm actually trying to uh, blend the shadows for the pagoda into the white walls into the white pillars but i left out the white pillars i actually accidentally painted over the white pillars so later on i have to paint back the white pillars with white gel pen so after blocking in the big ships uh, such as the sky with blue um, that's ultramarine by the way and the trees and the ground and the pagoda and now i'm adding the little details like the colors for the signboards the rooftops the green for the windows if you want to use white gel pen to draw the white window frames later make sure you paint the glass of the windows much darker actually if you want to use white gel pen over anything make sure the background is dark enough because the white gel pen doesn't show up that well against light backgrounds you may notice I painted the ground in front of the building again and that's because the earlier wash was too light so with this second wash I can see the contrast between the ground and the building is more obvious which is more representative of the actual scene and now I'm adding the really dark shadows just to create additional contrast in the sketch and you can actually use the side of your round watercolor brush to add the leaves so that you can get those tapered strokes very easily and now I'm adding some additional colors just to make certain parts look more vibrant look more how's, how I say um, eye-catching because um, if the sketch looks too washed out in all the areas um, it's there's nothing that's going to catch the attention of the person looking at the sketch so this is me drawing the lines which are actually going to a vanishing point so these lines will add texture to the ground I'm also looking around the sketch to see where else I can add more details without making the sketch look more busy so I'm using the white gel pen again to add more details um, those little dots um, can represent lights and the little dots on the trees can represent the light from the sky in the background little dots can mean different things depending on the context so if I have little black dots on the ground they can refer to texture if the dots are further away from the ground they can represent people and if the dots are drawn beside a tree beside the leaves they can represent leaves so this sketch is considered done I would have preferred to draw this on location because it's just more fun and it's going to feel more spontaneous but I am not able to do that so I have to well draw this at home but I still enjoyed drawing this a lot um, it's a really fun sketch to draw a really fun scene to draw all right I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and once again do consider supporting me on patreon to help me put out more content like the one you have just watched